If I How would you like me to introduce you? Um, just gonna... say I'm amazing and fabulous. <laughs> and I'm, no, I'm decent. <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah. Okay, I'm here. Uh, this is the amazing and fabulous <laughs> Bill McFadden. No, really, this is Bill McFadden, a legendary handler. Um, and I want to share some of uh, his insight with you guys. I guess the, the first thing I want to ask is if you could just share something memorable from your career with us. Oh, memorable? Well, I met my wife. Oh my God! Why do you have to come on here all cute? <laughs> like, of course, he's. Yeah, I guess he's just like me, cause that's what I say too. I, I am so in love with my wife. Um, we met grooming too. Yeah. No, I mean I met her a lot. I mean we've been married 38 years, but so that's memorable. Oh my God. Um, and I, I have a lot of great memories. A lot of great memories. Most of them around people. And yeah. there's you get to meet a lot of neat people at dog shows. And people from all different walks of life, everything from princes to paupers, and um, that's cool, you know, to people you would never meet for and, any other reason. And uh, you have a few Westminsters under your belt, right? I have two, yep. Wow, that's it. Uh, well, Those anyone cool. that knows, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> two. Um, cool. I have uh, groomer followers, and I'm a dog groomer, first and foremost. And I want to bring more groomers into the show world. I feel mm -hmm. like it's a really good way to improve your skills as a dog groomer. Um, do you have any advice if a groomer is watching this and they are interested? Do you have any advice to them? Come on. I mean, I am so impressed by the grooming community that I've met. I've sold a, f a few dogs to, to groomers that are using them in grooming competitions nice. and then choosing to act, show them at confirmation shows. Because if you can groom them for a grooming competition, I judged a grooming competition and was blown away by the stripping class. I think that was a Groom Bowl, right? Uh, it was, was in it Atlant Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. yeah and it, I was blown away by the, the quality of the work. In two hours, I couldn't do it. I mean, <laughs> it was amazing. I think so, um, this, people can do flat work on a, a wire in an incredibly fast in a grooming competition. Yeah, I can't do it that fast. <laughs> I, mean, I can't do that either. I cannot do that. No, it, um, I was I was really amazed, and um, I think you know we were just talking before we we start talking that there's not really a good portal. Like if you go on the AKC website, there isn't some portal that says if you know nothing, press this button and we'll show tell you all about it. So people um, they make up stories in their own mind about why they couldn't do it or why they think they're not able to do it and really the the dog world is pretty forgiving of just about anything you know it's, it's a pretty inclusive community I mean there you know there can be factions that don't get along and stuff but for the most part if somebody comes in and you can see that they are um, passionate and willing to work hard and all. When we're talking about dogs that require grooming, I mean, anybody can buy a French Bulldog and come too, but you don't have to groom those. But, but for people that are really passionate about it, to see a young person, even if they're not young, I mean, a person that's young to this sport <laughs> come in with the, the passion to learn how to groom, how, how to perfect the grooming, how to improve what they already know, it's, it inspires us because you know it's a sport that is kind of on the decline because yeah. uh, there's not a lot as many young people coming into it so it's very exciting and i love the people i've met and so uh, i've 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 heard people say oh um it's too hard to get into the into the show world because people are gatekeeping or and i've also heard from breeders or from breeders saying, oh, young people, the young people trying to get in maybe aren't as dedicated. And I don't, I personally don't think it's it's either, but it's more of like a mixture. Yeah. Because I think there could be, not that there needs to be blame, but I think you could get a little bit either way. But I think if you persist and keep work and sh actually work hard, um, everyone's here to help. Probably the most important thing is just to come and, and watch, you know, come and open your eyes. And when you see somebody that you like their dogs or you like the way they're grooming i always tell people go make friends with a handler they always can use an extra hand 
oh make it yes, so yes. that <laughs> no seriously and yeah. and then you become part of their family so mm-hmm. when you start showing they're rooting you on they're there to to support you and and uh, celebrate when you win and console when you lose and um and when i say a handler there's also really good breeders that show a number of dogs that can always use the extra hand yeah when you show groomed breeds once you get them groomed you always need someone to hold them so they don't sit down and mess it up or whatever so so uh, you come in and watch people and and keep your ears open because if you hear bad stuff about people you have to make up your own mind but but you know where there's smoke a lot of times there's fire so yeah when we first got into poodles oftentimes we would come to a show for learning and um what we would do most of the time is just hold poodles by the yeah. ringside. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, no. hey, you're a free hand, hold yeah. this muzzle. And, and that's so valuable to people that have, you know, dogs that, that require a lot of grooming. They get them all looking beautiful, and then they need someone just to hold them while they're, while they're showing other ones. How did you first get into the AKC confirmation world? I went to a dog show with some friends of mine. that They were showing a St. Bernard and a Great Dane. Oh, wow. And they were singers. It was a husband and wife. They were singers, and they owned these dogs. And I don't know that that they ever, um, I bet they bought them, not really planning to show them, but they bought them from really good breeders. I know a few few people like that. Yeah, and and so then I think that just kind of once they figured out there was a dog show world, they started going, so they had their dog show. And so I went with them. We went in a Vega hatchback. I was in the hatchback oh, with a Great Dane on one side and a St. Bernard on the other. And it was like I had gone to the Emerald City. I was oh, just wow. like, I could not believe the dog show. I remember the dog that went best in show. I remember where he was groomed at. I still see it when I'm at the Portland show. Wow. Um, I remember the dog's name. And it was. And so I came home and I bought a Dog World magazine and I went through all the ads in it. And there was... Um, an ad for some Karen Terriers in nice. the town where I lived. And we had actually had Karens from this kennel. And it, w- it was a handler that had retired. And they bred Irish Setters, Karen Terriers, and Chows. And I went there and I bought two adults, a, a four-year-old bitch and her two-year-old daughter. And within a week, the four-year-old bitch came in season. And... <laughs> I they told me call Stella Newby in Canada and breed to her top winning dog and I did sent my mother with the dog up there got the breeding done it was not even the dog that they were talking about (laughs) but um, that was that was how I got started now that's not the way to do it but I was lucky enough to have some people encourage me and see that I that I was thirsty, you know, like I didn't know anything, but I was thirsty to know things. Yeah. And, um, and I still remember that guy, he was, he was a pretty successful handler. And when I bought them, he, he was trying to show me how to walk them on a lead. And <laughs> yeah. I can remember when I took the dog to down out. and back in his driveway. And when I came back, he said, you're going to win West, you're going to win best in show at Westminster someday. <laughs> and I'm sure he was just making sure the hook was really sunk yeah, into my cheek. Deep. But his wife called me after the first time yeah. I won uh, Westminster. And so she remembered him saying it too. So, um, Wait, and, the, and then by going true. to Canada, for that, that first litter, with the sire was in Canada. By going up there, that's where I met my wife. So it's like, Aww. you know, there's things that it, it's like okay you have to get you have to start from now and go back to figure out how you got here yeah. <laughs> you know because yeah. it wasn't a plan i kind of went right when i should have gone left but sometimes you just got to shoot by the hip yeah and it's been shoot a great great life i love the people more i love dogs but i love the people yeah, that my, i've uh, met more than anything i've got into dog shows because my wife drugged me um, drugged you Drug me. Oh, drug. <laughs> she dragged me. <laughs> she dragged me all. That's and the other way. If somebody roofies you to get you to show a dog, yeah. I mean, come on. Well, she got me here, and I, I, I've always loved dogs. But this world is is something that you can't really, you can't really explain it to somebody without being no. there and experiencing and, it. And it's very, um, you don't, people don't know it's here. You know, when yeah. someone comes to a dog show that's never been to one, they're like. We had no idea. Before I was a dog groomer, yeah. I literally 
did not know what a grooming salon was. I didn't know people paid other people to bathe or groom their dogs. Yeah. I had no idea about yeah. any of all. I don't know what I thought. Maybe I thought people just all groom their own dogs. Yeah. But it just was did never cross my mind. In your opinion, why is it important to uh, show dogs in confirmation? Why is it important? Why is it important? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's not important like in curing cancer important. Yeah. But these breeds are all very specific and distinct. And um, there's nothing. I mean, we all love dogs. We yes. all love dogs. Uh, yes. I, I've loved mixed breed dogs. I, for some reason, have always had purebred dogs. Since I was two years old, I had a beagle. Yeah. I had a collie. I mean, you can identify certain characteristics, certain traits that will fit your lifestyle. Yeah. Or your personality or whatever. So not everybody has the patience for a terrier that, you know, they don't, they're not, I, I mean, they are obedient, but they're not. You know, they're not servile, let's put it that way. Yeah, you gotta you know? expect something from a terrier, but that level of chaos you get from a terrier is something I crave. I do too. I well, love if it. If you knew my wife better, you would understand. I married I married a you terrier. You married a terrier. She's a Scottish terrier <laughs> through and through. Um, I always tell people most of the work we do at the salon is doodles and stuff oh right my now. Gosh, yeah. But I honestly think that the doodle fad is gonna start to fade because what I've noticed over the last few years is that all the dogs kind of are starting to look the same. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone comes in and sees our dogs, we have a bunch of purebred dogs. They're always amazed by them because yeah. they look so different. Right. Right. And I think that's something that AKC confirmation shows off is how amazing and different each breed is. Yeah. You and know and I mean? really distinct. And I, what I love, love about it is, you know, we all are passionate about saving the seals and saving the three-toed newt yeah. and all these things. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why we dogs, want to yeah. save save purebreds because um, you can't have you can't have a golden doodle if you didn't have a golden and a poodle. Oh my God, I that is so that, yeah. Rich yeah. And, yeah 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 and I mean I'm not promoting golden doodles but I'm just saying that the the reason they bred those together other than maybe. I don't know if they were smart enough to think they were going to make a ton of money, but they they liked qualities about both those yeah. breeds. Actually, so. as of recently, or not recently, but the the person who first bred the Labradoodle has actually came out and yeah. he says it's one of the great mistakes, mistakes of his yeah. life. <laughs> um, After speaking to a lot of groomers, <laughs> they would agree. So, but you know the the doodles, I I get them and I love them, and they line they they pay all my bills. Yeah. But, yeah, I would love to see more purebred dogs in, in our yeah. salon. Lastly, how do you think the grooming industry can help uh, preserve the AKC? Well, it, it's funny that you asked me that because I've been saying it for the last couple of months. Um, I, I mean, may, maybe save the AKC is, is a, wow. a, a grander um, statement than... But I just feel it's like a new... If you were in business, it's a new revenue stream. You know, I mean, yeah. it's like a new, it's yeah. just like a new bunch of people coming in. And we need people that are passionate and excited. Um, you know, I, I think anybody, once they first get started at dog shows, it's addictive. And, it really and you is. get passionate and you get like, you know, you, you're you starting to plan your vacations around going to dog shows and, and your time off and, you know... Um, it's so we need that passion and it's just cool to have it come from people that already work hard on grooming dogs so why some breeds have kind of died off is because they they take extensive grooming so oh, yeah. when you when you have a, a bunch of people coming in that spend their life doing extensive grooming it's nice it's it's just yeah. a great boost of energy and and passion and and that's that's what we need i think it's great and and i also like the, the uh, grooming competition I judged, they were trying to encourage, and I, I think it's an industry trend, for groomers to groom breeds to correctly. Yes. Not not yes. to you know not to groom every terrier to look like a Schnauzer. Yeah. And and I love right. that because you know all breeds are distinct and um, 
And pe- when you have a dog that's trimmed right and you walk it around a park or something and people are like, yeah. oh my God, that's Catches so cool. Where, where, you know, yeah. who grooms your dog or that kind of thing. I so. do. <laughs> <laughs> and but, then, um, but I think that's cool. And I think so on a couple different levels, it helps the, the fact that there's people in your industry that are trimming dogs correctly makes people see dogs look the way that they should should be seen. Yeah, a properly presented dog is is a sight to see for sure. Yeah. Uh, one more fun thing, uh, if you what are your what is your top five breeds? Top five breeds, um, I well I breed wire fox terriers. So Beautiful I have, wire fox. Have to say that, but I love poolies. Oh, nice. Uh, every poolie I've ever shown, I would be happy to own as a pet. I just love the, I love the feel of their hair. I love taking care of their hair, but I just I love their they're just cool dogs. I really love yeah. them. Um, I mean, I really love terriers. English Springers are my favorite breed. <laughs> Me too. English Springers? Yeah. That's yeah. the dog I saw go best in show. That my first dog show I went to, and I love that breed. Wow. Um, I mean, I really, I like, all, I like dogs. There's only, yeah. you know, I, it'd be easier for me to name the ones okay. i don't okay. like but yeah, i'm okay. not gonna okay. answer Can that you, is this, <laughs> give me one dog that you wouldn't want to own then that i wouldn't want to own hmm. <laughs> <laughs> me i think it's a i love them but i don't think i'd want to own like a sharpay it just seems like too much skin you know what and i don't hair. i don't like the dogs that are hairless um i there's something about the feeling of their skin i don't like and some people like it but to me it just feels like like I don't know, no, sweaty I know. armpits. Yeah, I know just, we, just, my wife wants a, uh, she wants a sphinx, and I every time I touch one of those things, it just oh, reminds me uh, of a uh, testicle or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but now I, there's two breeds. I don't know. <laughs> That's it then. Uh, okay. This is Bill McFadden. He has some groups to do to to go into. Um, but thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.